Welcome to My Comic Shop History. I'm your host, Anthony Desiato. This episode is our biggest one yet. I'm joined by three guests. Brian O'Day. Hello, all. Doug Desher. Howdy. And Carolyn Helensky. What's up? Thank you all for joining me tonight. Thanks, Thanks for thank having me. Thank you. Yeah. Glad to be here. It's right. awesome. Of course. Uh, looking forward to this. Now, Carolyn, I can't tell you how many people commented on you uh, with respect to your appearance in the film that I made about the store, um, there were really? many. No, seriously, at a number of screenings as well as uh, some comments online, uh, there you have uh, many admirers. It was, I have it was a following. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, uh, look at her blush. It's so funny. It's hilarious. <laughs> I think that's hysterical. That's great. As you should, though. <laughs> yeah. It was. I have to say, it was all. Um, it was all very PG. Although there was one person on YouTube. Again, it, it was. It was clean, but. <laughs> I, I did. I may feel, have to go uh, on YouTube now. <laughs> but I, I, I did feel the need to say I was yeah, like, oh, I was like, you know, I'll pass, I'll pass the kind words along to Carolyn. But you know, she's happily married. Like, I, to, I am married. I'm sorry. I wanted to throw that out there. But yes, you were definitely breaking uh, hearts already. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely had a lot of uh, a lot of admirers. Oh my god, that's amongst, so funny. Amongst viewers, the you know the working title for this episode is. Worst offender in store history. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> it is. I, I can't believe you're bringing this up, but if when, ever there were a time. Yes, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> when Steve did that scribe on Facebook, where he went off on a tear on everybody, I was in desperate fear every time I kept scrolling down. I'm reading, and he's like, "And that guy? Oh, that's not me. Oh God." And 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 and, and the other guy that. Oh, it's not me. I got through the whole Facebook post, and there isn't one mention of me who was affectionately, I'm air quoting, referred to <laughs> as the worst offender in the store's history. Every time I would come up, he would never say it to my face. He would well, always, no, of course. He would always say it behind my back, and then people would come up to me and go, you know, you're still the worst offender in the store's history. <laughs> Steve let us know last week. Yeah. Uh, I had too much stuff on hold in the back. And Steve had to open the gates and put it all out for sale. And he never forgot it until this Facebook post. And then he completely got amnesia and he didn't mention me at all. But didn't didn't he associate you with uh, the Will Eisner statue? And when he finally bought it, he died? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like, there was like, <laughs> there was a Will Eisner spirit statue in the case, and I kept saying, "I'm going to buy it," I'm, and I bought it. And like the, that week, he died. Will Eisner died, so I killed Will Eisner. So were you at? You were at some point. You were declared dead. No, I no. almost. I was on life support. Oh, but you I got it. laid off, and money was really tight, and I didn't come in for two and a half months. And I came in, and he had my file. He would pulled it out of the file folder cabinet and had me on the floor. And he looked at me. He said, it's a good thing you came in because you are you were about to die. <laughs> but I never understood his, his duration for the dead files because there's people who have had files here for a year. And then he just finally decided to declare them dead. Clear, clearly, I was three months because was, it was about two and a half, three months. And he was like, you were, you were on death's door. Well, there are, yeah, there are definitely stages to this. So it's like you can be, you could sort of be in the ambulance, then you can be at the hospital, <laughs> like in the waiting room, <laughs> then you make your That's way the in. That's like purgatory. It's like you're in the waiting room because you sit there for hours upon yeah. hours upon hours. So you can be there for a while. You made it, you were on life support, but then yes. you pulled through. They, he was going to pull the plug. Yeah. <laughs> and I pulled through the 11th hour. <laughs> Well, yeah. So something you, know, you could die, and then, but even within even within death, there are stages because you can be dead, and then you can be dead, dead, dead. <laughs> yeah, what, or you could be can, mostly can you dead, like Princess Bride, and then dead, dead, dead. I, yeah, what's the difference? 
Well, once you're dead, dead, dead. I mean, I think that's that's pretty much it. I so think there's the three levels of dead. There's, no, that's <laughs> there's the no dead, thing. dead. There's no dead, dead. There is no dead. Uh, there was. There's, you're either dead or dead, dead, dead. I never understood the the tier. You can't the, go from dead to dead, dead, dead. There has to be dead, dead. Well, you know, this is Steve. This is his his system. So I'm yeah. not questioning it. You know. Okay. Is anyone surprised the store is going out of business? No. No. <laughs> I mean, I guess this is this is the opportunity for us to talk about it. I mean, every guest who's come on, I've, I've been asking them about this, their take on the closing of the store, both in terms of just the fact that it's closing as well as the, the way it's going out. And by that, I mean, the, you know, as Doug, you, you alluded to before, you know, that that's Facebook post that Steve put out there. So right. I want to just th- throw it to you guys. Um, just sure. sort of how do you how do you feel about the store closing? Personally, I'm sad that the store is closing, but I'm also glad the store is closing because if you see the state of it is now, it's just it's not what I remember. It's not what I take away from the store. Um, I think Steve has exhausted all of his patience with the store as well. Not either good or, or bad. I mean, you know, I'm very, I'm very happy that he's like letting it go to pasture. I mean. Okay, get rid of everything, whatever. But what I'm taking away from the store is not is 17 years of friendships that I've built up. And almost two years ago, two years in September, my dad passed away. Almost everybody from this store that I ever met, you know, came in regards. Um, Doug was there nine years ago. He was the first person I called nine years ago when my father got sick. Well, now it's 11, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know, math, right? Um, because his <clears throat> dad got sick with the same thing my father-in-law had. So he didn't know where to turn. And that's a testament to how great the connections that we've made at this store are, is that when his father was facing a life-threatening illness, he went to somebody he met through the store, which he would never have met me otherwise. Yeah, that, I mean, I, like I said, I can't take thank, you know, like I'm taking away a lot from the store, but like as the building stands, it's just a building at the end of the day. I, I agree completely. And just to jump off of, of what you said about those connections, I mean, Doug, I want to take this opportunity to thank you publicly for all of your help with this podcast. Oh, you're very welcome. It was my pleasure. I really, you got so excited about it. And I know how overwhelming it seems like, okay, where do I start? I'm like, well, I know all this stuff. I've got to help Anthony. He's going to get this off the ground. Once I show him what to do, he's going to go. And you have done exactly what you did when you made the documentary. You said, okay, I got to do this, do this, do this. And you're off and running. You are a one-man band, and you're really good at what you do. Well, I appreciate it, and I, but really, I could not have done it without you. So to everyone listening out there, <laughs> you're, you're listening in large part uh, because of this man uh, sitting across from me. And you, you took at least one frantic phone call where I was like, oh, my God, there's no sound. <laughs> and what did I tell you? Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not looking at it. I'm on the phone. Just start turning buttons. Yeah. <laughs> turn, turn a knob. Push this. Do this. And you know what? That's what he did, and he Press got it working. Press all the buttons. It, but it worked. <laughs> don't press the red button. It worked. It uh, totally worked. You were like, yeah, you, you were right. I just started twiddling knobs and I got sound. Doug, I'll toss this one to you. How okay. would you describe the store to someone listening to this who has never stepped foot in alternate realities? It's um, kind of like uh, if you watch Storage Wars and you open up the door and it's chock full of a lot of great things. Good luck finding what's in here. It's really, it's like an overstuffed <laughs> closet. A lot of great stuff, but it's not organized like a store. It's more organized like somebody's basement or somebody's attic. I'll, I'll, I'll do. I'll be the harsh one if you want. Okay, but like, you my, be bad cop. I'll be bad cop because you know when I was younger, my parents when I had a messy room, it looks like a bomb went off in it. So basically, it looks like a big bomb went off in here. It's, 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 it's chaos. It's pretty much all chaos. Before we get away from it, you were talking about how we feel about the closing of the store. Initially, when I saw that Facebook post, I got so seething anger just welled up in me because I was really I was always dreading it and I said he better not he better I even said it in your documentary hey, you can't you can't close the store you can't and as we've gotten further and further away from the post and closer to the store closing I'm beginning to have a sense of no this is the way it's supposed to be maybe this is the time I jump off I stop reading comics the store's going away and maybe so does my interest in comics. I don't know, but it really wow. does feel like the end of an era. It's like this bookends a lot of what's going on in Marvel and DC, and it also bookends, I don't know if I want to buy comics from somebody else. Buying them here felt like something special to, to, to look forward to once I a week. I agree. I agree. I don't know if I could go look for another you know, comic book shop. Because there was something about buying it here. And even though as chaotic as this place is, there's just something about buying comic books here. 
Okay, I'll put it like this. It may be a shithole, but it's our <laughs> shithole. It, 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 it is. It is our shithole. It is our shithole. <laughs> now, how do you feel? Uh, there was somebody <clears throat> who was trying to conjure up a competing documentary. And what I, I, I emailed you, I said, your documentary about alternate realities is like the Highlander. There can be only one. <laughs> so how did you feel when that began to bubble up can I just from under the surface? Stop you? There's a fucking documentary uh, that another one. So All right, c- continue. I want to I want I need details after you're okay. all done. Okay. <laughs> so I've been debating whether or not to to really talk about this on one of the episodes, but uh maybe a little controversy will be good for the ratings. So um, just to put this all in context, as as I touched on before briefly, um, prior to this podcast, I made an independent feature length film about the store called My Comic Shop Documentary, and uh, really just about the community that has developed here over these these past twenty three years. And um, here's a little shameless plug, but that film and its spinoff, uh, By Spoon, the Jay Mizell story, are both available to rent uh, separately or together on Vimeo. So plug, plug, plug. that's a plug. Well, honestly, I mean, I'm assuming most people listening to this podcast are probably aware of this and likely have seen the movie. But for those who haven't or haven't seen the, the follow up, uh, I think you would enjoy it. Uh, but in any event, um, it came to my attention recently that that Steve began participating in a new documentary uh, that at least featured the store. Um, initially, it was unclear to me as to what exactly the focus of this film uh, is. Uh, it's being made by one of his customers, uh, number 287, I, I believe. And, um, you know, so I, the first time I spoke with Steve about it, um, again, it was a little unclear to me as to what the focus was. And I said to Steve, I was like, I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> um, and just here's my disclaimer. You know, I don't own the idea of a movie about a comic book shop. I, I don't even own the idea of a movie about alternate realities. I don't have Steve signed to an exclusive deal. That being said, uh, it, it sort of feels like I do. <laughs> and, um, you know, just by virtue of, of the role that I've had in the store, um, the time shopping here, working here, making the movie, doing the podcast, um, I do feel a sense of ownership and... And I am territorial about it, and you know, I I won't apologize for that. You shouldn't. Um, no, you shouldn't. So. You were, you were there first, dude. And what I like <laughs> is that you went right to Steve and you confronted him right away. You didn't let anything linger. Well, you know, one of the things that's often been said about Steve, uh, it's in the documentary, is that he will avoid confrontation. And um, I I didn't want to be like that. I didn't want to not say anything. So shortly after I told Steve, I was like, I don't like this. Uh, the documentarian actually reached out to me uh, over Facebook. And uh, I've not met this person. I, I don't. I didn't know who he was prior. And he goes, "Hey, man, I'm doing a doc focusing on AR and its importance to the community." And I'm thinking to myself, "Boy, that sounds familiar." <laughs> this was done already. Just a little. This was done already. And that was basically my response to him. And then he came back, and all of a sudden, it was a different story. It was that um, AR is just a part of it, and he's talking to these other shop owners. And the reason he was reaching out to me was he wanted to film this podcast. What? Yeah, no. no. Get the f- okay. Big no. So that was uh, my first interaction with with two eighty seven, and um, you know, I I will say he might feel otherwise, but I, I was polite. I mean, I just said, you know, this isn't something I'm interested in in participating in. You know, I have my projects out there. I'm not. I don't want to endorse something that could potentially take away from from what I'm doing. And um, and so then I shortly thereafter, I sent out an email to all of you, not you, Brian, only because you were changing email addresses. Yeah, I so. know. <laughs> I, well, that was that's a work that goes back to a work thing. So. But so you were a little bit out of the loop on that. But yeah, I, this is a pretty much the first time I'm hearing of it. And I'm a little bit shocked and I'm actually shocked. Steve is participating in as as much as you're saying he is. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, Steve, I know you're listening to this, but forgiveness. But like, you know, where's the loyalty, dude? I mean, yeah, that's what I was thinking when I you know, first that, found out that, about it. Wow, that's that's uh, shenanigans. I call bullshit. I call, like you know, that's that's pretty harsh. Uh, who is two eighty seven? Has he ever come out to dinner with any of us? I mean, who is he? No, no. So so wow. I. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have to say is like wow. I mean like I'm like mind blown. Your your head flabbergasted. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it really does. Stinging? I think it just did a little bit. It wow. just it imploded. <laughs> sorry, I, I'm sorry. It's okay. It, no, no, it's all right. Um, wow. But uh, so I sent out this email to all of you just telling you what was going on in case he reached out to you guys. And I said in my email and I do I did mean it genuinely that if anyone wanted to participate, I was not asking anyone to decline. 
I just wanted to make my position known in case anyone wondered or cared. You know, this whole thing has been kind of difficult and troubling, and I can get into that a little bit more. But the the biggest positive that I really try to focus on the most is just the outpouring of support from everyone. I mean, including you know you here at this table. Um, it it just really meant just the the overwhelming you know support that, that I'm you still guys shaking all my head. I'm still like kind of flabbergasted about the whole thing. I'm sorry. You, you've got a forward uh, former customer, Bill Mayo, who oh, now I was going to bring him up. His yeah. was a very long, I mean, it was about eight paragraphs, beautifully written, heartfelt, compassionate, just an outpouring of, of really positive vibes. And you'd love reading that. And he's what in New Mexico. Yeah. And, and he's not around very often, but again, going back to what you said, and we've made these connections I don't see him sometimes for a year, and the minute I see him, it's like we're old army buddies, and I give him a hug, and I've missed him, and that doesn't diminish. That connection does not diminish over time and over miles. Yeah, the, I mean, the whole thing, again, has just been a little difficult, just on top of you know everything going on, obviously, with the store well, closing. Yeah. But uh, no, the support that everyone showed really was very touching. I mean, as you, Bill's letter in particular was, was extremely I, moving, I would like to read that, and I'll though. forward everything to you. All right, cool. Um, Thanks, man. But uh, so m- almost everyone I emailed responded uh, saying that they, you know, we stand united. Um, <laughs> uh, Steve was silent. Steve did not say anything. And then um, I heard through the grapevine that, you know, that filming was continuing and Steve was continuing to participate. So then I came in again and I said, just, you know, what's, I just want to know what's going on. Because I was hearing somewhat conflicting things, to, long story short. So I came in and, and, yeah, Steve made it clear that he's continuing to participate. He seems to be, his rationale seems to be twofold. One, he seems to think that the project is distinct enough from mine. Whether or not it is, you know, it, it might be. It might be. And I do know that 287, he is interviewing other comic shop owners. So if nothing else, it should have a bit of a wider scope than what oh. I did. Um, Who's but, he interviewing? Uh, Spider's Web oh, and Modern Paul. Myths. And, All right. Paul, yeah. Paul, who was a former customer of Alternate Realities. Paul, who actually called me to check to make sure it was okay that he participated in this, this which is far yes? more <laughs> that is awesome. than that, I got from the person I would have expected it from. Well, yeah, exactly. But that's Paul, Paul's also that kind of guy. He's a good guy. He's actually been doing podcasts at his- He is, uh, and he's going to be on this podcast. Oh, that's- uh, Man, we, you got you got, a you got everything covered. <laughs> cool. Um, but uh, but anyway, so I, you know, I, I spoke to Steve about it. So he seems to feel that it's distinct. But it, the thing that I guess was more troubling was he was just like, yeah, and basically he's of the opinion anyone can film or write or do anything they want about the store. And, and, I, and here's the thing, another disclaimer. It's like it's his store. He can do whatever he wants. Um, I, I guess it's just, you know, there's a moment in my documentary. Um, <laughs> Where <laughs> no anger, no, there's no, no anger. anger, not bitter. Where uh, not bitter. at all. <laughs> where one of our one of our customers and friends, Mike San Gregorio, he he tells a story about how Steve canceled his file because Mike wasn't picking up his books, and he was like, you know, it hurt. He's like, you know, I, I always thought that Steve and I were closer, but maybe it was just in my head, and it's like on a personal level. Well, I, I mean, I know how Steve feels, and I you know I don't mean to be like, oh, that's it. I hate the guy. Now that's certainly not the case, but I, I am surprised, and it definitely does. Like, I never thought that this would be an issue. And it's one thing if he didn't think of me when this other doc, when this other filmmaker came to him. That in and of itself, okay. But once he knew how I did feel about it, um, and the fact that he really doesn't seem to care, um, it does does definitely, you know, change my view to, to a certain extent. Do you think it's because he doesn't care anything for the store anymore, though? I mean, I think, you know what I mean? It's like cutting all ties. No. I have, like, I have a very strange suspicion that, like, we might not ever see Steve again after the store closes. Probably not, but I think it actually goes to something deeper. I don't think Steve understands what the store means. I, I've written a lot about him. I've interviewed him a bunch of times. And it's like I, I know these different sides that he has. So it's not like I'm shocked by what's transpired in a certain sense. Um, but... Uh, it's yeah I don't know it's like I guess I've never been on the receiving end of <laughs> you know of something like that and uh, yeah it just sort of I don't know just disappointing puts things in a different perspective it's very disappointing is that is that what it is I mean did you expect more from Steve because you know Steve is Steve is like very lackadaisical <laughs> I guess I guess that's that's a good question of like what what did I actually expect and and again I I don't as I said I mean I don't know that I actually expected him to initially be like oh I don't know if I can participate I need to check with Anthony. I don't know that I even expected that much, but like once I did make my feelings known, the fact that, I mean, again, maybe he really did consider this. I don't know, but it just seemed like he, I mean, it didn't slow him down at all. In my opinion, Steve probably thinks in his, well, what do I need to ask you for? 
Right. It's my store. Yeah. I don't have to ask you. I mean, that, that's probably how he thinks. Like, I, since when do I need your permission to do this? And, and he doesn't. He doesn't need no, my permission. I, but. I, I, I mean, I'm just playing devil's advocate, you know, but... Well, you, you should take solace in the fact that your documentary, I think, made all of us who've been part of the community of this store recognize and appreciate just what we do have and what we've continued to have since you made the documentary. Yeah, you put a lot of hard work into this. Oh, man. yeah, absolutely. Like, so much hard work. I mean, like... I'm I'm glad you had the fucking balls to do it too. Like seriously, <laughs> <laughs> never made a documentary Nobody... before ever, and just said, you know, I'm going to go buy cameras, lights, and I'm going to yeah, shoot. This. And it was amazing. I'm going to edit it, it and it was great. So well done. You know, but like you know, a lot of people talk about, oh, that'd be a really good. Idea. You actually went out and fucking did it, man. And I, I I give you a lot of credit for that. Just on on your own, like said, hey, I want to do it. You went and got disclaimers. You got, we all signed little disclaimers. <laughs> That's right. Our releases, right. You know, right. it was like, it was cool, man. It was like, oh, wow, it's actually like me. I mean, I remember being in the documentary and it was like, it was a heartfelt documentary. And even by Spoon was a very, I actually had tears when I watched that, you know, Jay Mizell. I was, I was so sad. And I, I guess what the takeaway is, is that I know that I'm probably sadder now about the closing of the store and more angry. And I, I have more of a visceral, emotional response because of your documentary, because watching it, I've seen it three different times at screenings, and every time I see it, I say, a store made this, a place, a retail place of business. All of these relationships came out of a store. That doesn't happen very often. It's a, like a video yearbook. It's almost like we all signed each other's yearbook, and it's this living, breathing thing to remind us of you know what we had because we bought comics here. Yeah, it's like. It's like actually watching like a, a TV series ending. I'm looking around, and Free Comic Book Day, they made a big dent. A lot of stuff walked out the door yesterday. Not stolen, but paid for. <laughs> and, Basically. And there's still a lot of stuff remaining. I mean, this looks like if he spends a lot of time on it for seven weeks, he might get all this stuff cleared out. If you notice, he did take the uh, the DC trade paperbacks, those showcase books. <laughs> he took those home. Uh, that's about it. That's like scooping a cup of water out of the ocean. There was a Batmobile statue that I was like, well, you know, now that he's discounting stuff, maybe I'll buy that. And that went home. I don't know where it is. It's not there anymore. <laughs> just one, just one, got to take the statue home. Some of the stuff that these, that, you know, over the years that the guys ordered, and so I, I think Steve even says, oh, oh, I, I missed it. I was like, Steve, can't you just call them up and say, uh, I made a, I misplaced the order or I made a, a mistake? And it's like, I don't know if it was his own pride to just say, oh, I'd rather just buy the five boxes and not admit that I made the mistake or whatever. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> there's such, sometimes that's the way I feel like it was, you know? Speaking of Steve's ordering, one of my favorite stories that we haven't told yet is um, – there's something called comic shop news uh, that we don't get anymore. <laughs> yeah. and there's a very specific reason why. And any comic book fan out there uh, knows what comic shop news is. Basically, just a weekly newsletter, um, you know, news and, and interviews about what's Printed going on. Printed on newsprint, and, right? About what's going on in the comic book industry. And Sorry, so, I keep the table. Uh, it comes in in bundles of fifty. And uh, Steve would always order one bundle of fifty, but. Uh, I guess it was some some night, he was up late, didn't know what he was doing. Instead of typing one for 50 copies, he typed 50. <laughs> oh, my God. So he ended up with 50 bundles of this oh for a number God. of weeks until he was able to correct the order, <laughs> and uh, it was amazing. We were just overflowing oh with God. it, and that's why we don't get comic shop uh, comic shop. Yeah, wasn't anymore. he talking about making a big throne out of all, all of the comics? Probably, yeah. If I do, yeah, I do. I, I remember, oh, because Steve was the king of paper, like cardboard, king of no, cardboard, no, king yeah, of cardboard or whatever it was. But, but you know, going back to Paul for a second, you know, so Paul was a customer of ours who said, "Boy, I'd like to own a comic book shop," and he went out and he did it. And um, you know, one thing that that Brandon Montclair touched on in the in a couple episodes ago is, you know, to make a comic store work, especially today, it needs to be a destination. And from what I understand, that is sort of the approach that Paul is taking. He has signings. He has Saturday morning yeah. cartoon viewings where you come in your pajamas, and he has cereal and milk. Oh God, I remember. So I remember there were signings in his store, and then I, I heard a, a story later on that you know Steve's Ethan Van Skyver calls up the store. It's like, oh, the Ethan Van. You know I what? I remember that. So yeah, oh yeah, yeah. God. We got to tell the Ethan Van Skyver story. So, uh, so Brian. So who is Aunt Ethan Van Skyver? Ethan Brian? Van Skyver is an uh, artist. I guess was he? Do what he was on Green Lantern at the time. Green Lantern Rebirth was the uh, yeah. He the was big on one. Green Lantern at the time, 
And I guess he has family in the area or yes. something. And he said he was going to come into the store. And, you know, I th did he come into the store or not? I don't know if he actually came into the store. According to Steve, he eventually came in a few days later. But at okay. the time, he called he the called store. He called and said, hey, would you like me to do a signing at the shop? Yeah, the guy's and in Wizard Magazine. is like one of the top ten hot artists to watch. He calls Steve. It was like the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Yes. He wanted to come in that Wednesday. That Wednesday. And do a signing. And you think customers might have liked that? Yeah, maybe. 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 Well, I'm not That's sure. A tiny bit. Uh, and, I, and then I heard, and then Steve, Steve being Steve, his simple answer is no. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. That Steve was like, no. It's Wednesday. It's, it's the Wednesday busiest day of the week. week. You can't come. Don't call me on a Wednesday. Don't call me. You're, you're, you're not supposed to call me. You're not supposed to talk to me. Uh, but yeah, the Van Skyver thing, it was, um, it actually worked out well for me. I ended up meeting him at a comic convention in New York Comic Con. I was there with you. I was actually there with you when that happened. Yeah, and we and went we, up and we I was, went... yeah, and I was like, uh, I was like, do you remember Steve at Alternate Realities? And, oh, no, he remembered. Yeah, I remembered exactly. <laughs> no chance of forgetting that guy. No. Was like, he's, like, he's like, what What was that dude's problem? <laughs> like, I was like, okay. The Ethan Van, I was like, I, we have no, we actually can't tell you, so we don't know. So that was, that was really what Ethan Van Skyver said. He was like shocked. He was like. I was like, I couldn't believe it. It was like, well, you know, that's Steve. <laughs> that's in a nutshell. That that was Steve. I mean, and the thing is, it's you know, and this sort of both with Van Skyver and even with with packing up the store, it's like he, you know, again talking about our community. He has an army of people here who, if he had called up any of us that that Wednesday before Thanksgiving and said, "Listen, I've got Ethan Van Skyver coming in. It's going to be busy. It's going to be crazy. I need you to come in. I need some help." Any, I mean, I would have taken a day off from work. I would have taken a day off. Any of us would have come in. I would have taken a day off from work to come and do that. Again, I have not run my own comic shop, so maybe I don't know for sure. But I do think it's possible to make it work. Not, you know, it requires a different approach than <laughs> right. alternate realities. What else do you? What do you guys want to talk oh, about just, that we haven't talked just about? Just to touch back on, as Steve had an army of people in a prior podcast, the rough lover story was told. Yes, and I was not present, and everybody who told me said it. I was here. I basically would have grabbed him by the neck and just thrown him out the story. Just, just out of disrespect to Steve. I mean, like, the guy had some balls to come up to Steve and say what he said, which is fine. But, you know, we are friends with Steve, and I would have had, at, at that time, I probably would have had zero tolerance and would have just said, no, out. Get the fuck out, and I'm going to kick your teeth in. And if I had a lawsuit, there would have been a lawsuit. Not a problem. But I know a couple of good lawyers anyway, so I think it could have been okay. <laughs> you know, I mean... The store has, I mean, I, I've had a lot of, I have a, a lot of good friends here, uh, and I, like I said, I've got, I've got their back. If they, I trust me, I have got their back, but, you know, some people take, think it's fickle. It's not fickle. Trust me. I, 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 if I say I, have your, I got your back, I got your back. I can attest to that. I agree. I, mean, I think you were probably one of the most loyal people I've ever met. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you very much for the, the compliment. I mean, but. Except for one. Oh. One thing. What's that? You didn't go to my wedding. <laughs> oh. I went to, uh, that's true. I did, that is true. But because I, I, I had was very, I was very upset. Loyal was very to sad. Notre Dame. I, I went to the <laughs> Notre Dame game. It wasn't my fault. I had the tickets bought in Maryland. I was going to Maryland. I was like, I was just like, okay, so I'm gonna waste three hundred dollars, and and not go to uh, go and A waste. Go, I spent the money on the tickets and the bus trip and everything. I'm sorry. No, I love you, Brian. I love you too, Karen. You're good. Amongst the group of primarily, you know, adult men, we are not without our share of drama. I mean, my God, I just told a whole, whole story <laughs> involving myself. Um, well, that's good, though, because on these podcasts, you are a very uh, in the background. You're just trying to get the topic started. So uh, I think Brian is shining the light. I'm on trying you. to shine the light on you a little bit, dude. But, you know, well, you, I appreciate I, it. There's, well, you know, it's huh, it's funny. I, I wasn't going to address this either, but um, people have taken different approaches when they when they come on the podcast. So, um, episode two, the one with uh, Sean and Mike, there's there's more of me in that one than yes, there is in the other episodes. Because you, you have the playoff from Sean because you work together, and then right. you have the, all the different stories, and you could say, you know, the comic eater, and I was like, oh, it's the comic eater. I, I was like, when I was listening, yeah. to, I should have been like, oh, I can't call in. It's not it's not actually live. <laughs> <laughs> In this episode as well, it's it's this is what I want out of the podcast. I want it to be you know a conversation. The episodes one and three with with Steve and Brandon, they they're great. I'm proud of the episodes, but I think they approached it more as like they were they were being interviewed. And, uh, well, and that's, Brandon that's, you know, for sure. Fine. Brandon yeah. for sure. Well, Brandon has his own podcast as well, so that's he true. he was very delicate, and that uh, and I guess that's the best words I could use is say he was very 
he was very careful on in what he said, and like you can tell in his voice where he's trying to avoid saying something wrong or trying. He was trying not to offend. Steven. Well, he's in the industry. He's a creator. He's this is worked true. At, he's worked at DC, so I think you know he's looking to be as honest as possible. No, I I I completely agree. But also, agree. you know, maybe pull some punches. And speaking of prior episodes, Doug, you were actually present uh, during the recording of episode one when I yes. sat down with Steve. You were you very kindly were uh, you know working the board there and, and mm-hmm. monitoring everything. So uh, I don't know what was what was your take. Was there anything that he said that you were that you were particularly surprised by or not surprised? But I, I wanted to. It, it was very tough because I really there were a couple of moments I wanted to laugh, <laughs> and I didn't want to color your conversation with him. Yet. When he, the thing he said that I would, I, I just was like, what? In the store, there are a lot of great treasures <laughs> to find. I'm like, it's not an Easter egg hunt, Steve. <laughs> it's a comic book store. And if you have something great in a box, put it on a shelf so I can find it and I'll give you money for it. See, it's real simple. You have something, I give you money, and then you can pay your mortgage. You can go out to dinner. <laughs> But don't, why is it sitting in a box? What, what's the great mystery? Why is it cooler in the box that nobody knows where it is than it's out for everybody to buy? But we we can see there's tons of hush figures that have been on the shelf for five years. Nobody's bought those. But there might be an action number one in one of these boxes. And who knows if we'll ever find it. Well, it's actually a fun fact. So uh, we're, we're recording on this this long white table uh, oh, in the this... middle of, of the entranceway. And uh, when when we moved the table right before we started recording, um, there were a bunch of boxes underneath. And Steve was actually just leaving the store at the time. And he goes, oh, wow, what's under there? Whoa, action figures? He was like, <laughs> he was having his own moment of, of discovery. Wait, whose store am I in? But it's wow, his that's own really world. cool. It's Steve lives in his own world. And that, that's that been since day one, though. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, but, you know, you, you love him or hate him for it. And I mean, I think we all love Steve for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, and, or, you know, so I remember when I was in college and he was t- trying to help me s- save money. And God bless him for this. He literally got envelopes and put, like, you know, car insurance on this and, like, a picture of Captain America on it. And he's like, um, $5 a week or something like this. And then he would put in a dollar a day. I still have these envelopes, actually. I still have them. Now, speaking of your finances, I hope, I hope this doesn't get me in the gunny sack. But- no, that's fine. I think we need to we need to talk about Odwakonomics. Oh yeah, that was great. So Odwakonomics refers to to Brian's. Uh, how would how would you? I mean, how, what does it mean to you? Well, it was, it was basically my tipping policy at. Uh, well, it was it was a little it was broader than that. No, it, was, it, it was your financial sense generally. The, the, no, no, hold on a second. Whoa, 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 all right, all right, go back, go back, go back. It really was only a tipping policy, and the only reason is everywhere that was anything service industry related, I basically whatever the bill was, I just put that as a tip. So if it was a hundred bucks, I'd leave a hundred buck tip. If it was uh, if it was twenty dollars, I'd leave a twenty dollar tip. So because Warren, I w- Warren Buffett called him and said, "What are you doing?" Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, so since then, uh, literally, Drew had to beat the hell out of me and say, "What the fuck are you doing with your money?" It's like this is why you have no fucking money. I'm like, okay. And so I was like, okay. And then you know, my mother was like, "What are you doing with your money?" I was like, okay. I, I was like, okay, fine. Literally had to. Nix all of that. So now I stand our twenty percent, and we're we're all good. <laughs> but you know what? It comes from that comes from how generous Brian is. It Brian is, is yes. one of the most generous people. If you needed a shirt right now, Brian would give you the shirt off his back. He's that, and he does have your back. He is the most loyal and the most generous person I think I've ever met. It's to you. It's a badge of honor. It's like something you wear on your sleeve, and it's, it means so much to you that it you constantly are always like, "I got you, I got you," and you've had my back. So oh, I know yes. this is true. Yes, yes, this is true. That actually, how long ago is that now? Jesus. That's got to be like ten years. Yeah, that has to be ten years. Um, there was, we so we used to go into Casa Maya, obviously. A lot yeah, of like us. he's looking. Anthony's <laughs> looking. <laughs> like, you yeah, like, like you can't just refer to it yeah, like that yeah, and yeah, then leave well, it well, this amorphous. I'll nothing. let you tell. The, I'll let you tell the story because no, you tell the story. No, you, no, no, no. You tell the story because it's it's actually your story. But it wait, is my, it's while a, you while oh, while it percolates and while okay. it comes to to the forefront of your mind, what I was referring to with the Odwa economics yeah, was never, yeah. was beyond beyond the tipping was the fact that you opted 
basically for a 10% discount at the store rather than a 25% discount. Well, yeah. <laughs> I did that too. But I had the most credits in history. Yeah, but you could have been you could have been saving I so had like 2 money. grand in credits. I had like 2 grand in credits. So like Steve, you win. Yeah, pretty much. You, so just just to put this all in, in context. Like, Honestly, the whole reason for me doing that was because I wanted to have the most credits all time. I was determined to have the most credits. Right. And I think it still stands to this day. But and I just want to, so, so people know, um, so the way our system works here is uh, we keep track of our customers' purchases. Every $100 they spend, they get a $10 yeah. credit. So basically, the system that we have for the regular customers, it's a 10% discount. But Steve offered you 25%, and you said, no, thank you. You said, I'd rather just keep getting the credits. Yeah. Because at that point, because in my mind, because I was buying statues all the time, so if I had $125 in credit, i just basically take a statue out for free. That, that was the mentality. And then Steve was like, but I don't want to. I was like, no, but I have the credits. So like, I, I remember specifically once, Steve was like, no, you can't take it. I was like, Steve, I have how much in credit? I can take that statue and that statue, and you can, I'm down to zero. And that's basically, he's like, well, I can't do that anymore. He, he can't do that because I think he just felt like he lost money on it. But, like, essentially he didn't because law of averages and all the money he had spent prior. But, like, yeah, basically I did not take the 25% discount until <laughs> Steve actually forced me to take the 25% <laughs> discount because that's what happened. That's actually, I would go in and I would take statues basically for free and all my credits would go down to zero. That's funny. That goes back to the dead, 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 dead. Like, Steve never capped the amount of credits you could bank. Right. And then when the world's <laughs> biggest credit aggregator comes along and says, I have $2,000. No, you can't use that. Why are you telling me now? You could have told me at 100 bucks. <laughs> right. Right. It's like, oh, no, no. Now when you are so far gone, your sin is so egregious, I'm cutting you off, and I'm making you take a 25% discount. <laughs> That's essentially what happened. I think we always joked that it'd be great if you saved up so many credits that you bought the store. <laughs> that would have been awesome. That would have been fantastic. I think I could have done that. You walk up with Steve's keys. <laughs> like, I'll take these. I had a key to I'd the like store. I'd like to redeem my credit, I had a key Steve. to the store. Oh, that's I had great. a key to the store at one point. Uh, right. So, all right, I'll tell you the Casa Maya story. I'll try to be brief. It was, uh, we went to Casa Maya. And it's a Mexican restaurant in this strip mall. It's now called Maya. And <laughs> we, we were friendly with the uh, manager and the bartender. And I had a little too much sangria. And I made an off-color joke that I thought I knew the bartender well enough to make the joke. And I think it's funny. And before I know what's happening, what was the guy's name? John? Uh, yeah, I think his name was John. This guy, John, who's probably been overserved too is on me like stink on shit and he's got my hand in his hand and he's bending my wrist to the point where I can see the white bones are like ready to snap and I'm in a lot of pain he's got me pinned in the corner I didn't even see him coming and he's yelling at me telling me to and uh, sorry we're already explicit yeah. get the <laughs> fuck out of here you are gonna fucking leave and if I ever fucking see you in here again I will fucking kill you and I'm not just saying I'm gonna fuck I am going to fucking kill you do you get me and as he's doing this I'm like I'm gonna be in the emergency room and I'm gonna have like multiple bones broken in my wrist and as I'm doing this I can't move because I can't he's got me and anytime I flinch he's more pressure and Brian comes up behind him, puts his hands on his shoulder, and he's like, John, chill, cool, let it go, let it go. And he talks him down from this. Oh, no, I, I, I grabbed him. Oh, you grabbed him? I grabbed his hand off of your wrist. I basically went, I took his thumb and grabbed his hand off your wrist. I don't even remember that. And as Brian I, saved me from probably having pins in my wrist. And this guy was literally like, he must have had a fascination with the the bartender yeah. and Brian didn't have to do anything this is my problem I created this problem and he came up behind me and he looks at me and he's like anytime you need me if that ever happens anything ever happens I got you I will always have your back and I've never forgotten it never because many people will come up to you and they'll say I've got your back but they don't they want to their heart's in the right place, but they don't actually back it up with action. And Brian was there. And it's one of the things that bonded our bond even more 
tightly yeah, than it had been for sure. created before. Like when he went through what he went through with his dad, that brought us really close. But then that, I was like, I know no matter where I am, this guy is really a true friend. And it all came out of a place where I go to pick up my comics. So yeah. that's why I say what I say about Brian when it comes to loyalty and generosity. Brian's never, ever flinched from being generous with me or having my back, ever. And this is all, like, but this is everything from the store. Like, so much can be taken away from the store, from our bonds. And, like, I, like again, I, as I said, I'm glad it's closing, but I'm sad it's closing. It's a, it's a very, it's a very, you know... It's almost like a parent who's, like your dad. Your dad, there was a time, and same with my mom, when they get to a point where you know that even though selfishly you want to hang on to them, it's time to let them go. Yeah. No, it's true. Sorry to get yeah. all No, it's sorry. Maudlin. A little, little emotional and sorry. We can, don't, we can... No, no, don't apologize. The emotion, that's, that's real and that's great. I don't want to be maudlin, but that's what it feels like to me. I don't want to let go of the store. I want this store to stay here. But I look around and the store is not healthy. No. The store is on life support. And, but there's and, no and it, love in the store. There's, there, it's gone. The love in the store is gone. And that's probably why I'm sad. But like that's why I'm also glad because let it go out to pasture then. Let it let it have its life that it had, you know. I mean, there's no uh, uh, Sean is desperately holding on. Like he's going to be there <laughs> to the end. I love Sean. I mean, like he has some hope that it's still going to be here. I'm like, dude, you got to let it go. But you know, June 27th, <laughs> we can all go to the wake. Yeah, right. And we we can all remember we're family and we can all remember that we we care about each other and we're yeah, there absolutely. for each other. Because the dinners will continue. Right. I, you know, everybody. We will just meet somewhere else. We'll just probably yeah. meet at wherever we're going right. to. So, I mean, you know. And that's what's to take out of it. It's the friendship, you know. It's, you know, it's, it's funny. Uh, you know, you talk of, you know, the tit- you know, how they played on the Titanic while the ship was sinking. Um, <laughs> so now the store is the Titanic. <laughs> well, he's, he's the one who compares it to a ship. But uh, this is true. he is con- so one of one of Steve's tasks at the store is uh, the cycle sheet count, the process by which he he counts every book on the shelf oh every week God. in order to keep track and, and know how many he needs to order. So so he does this this cycle sheet count, and uh, you know we're we're less than two months away from closing, and he's still counting the books every week. Why? But I thought he wasn't ordering anything else. It, well, he has stuff coming in through through the end of June. But uh, not that beyond that. That makes no sense to have a <laughs> come in through the end of June. I I know, but so I mean, I throw. Well, you ask me why. I ask, we ask you why. Why do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. D- 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 there's no basis Sean for me so- to understand it. I mean, like Sean, Sean, like he, Steve in him of self is just a case study for him. He's- Sean, yeah, Sean as a psychologist, it is. But Sean, bless his heart. So Sean wa- works every other uh, Saturday, Saturday yeah. and so sometimes Sean is doing the cycle sheet count, and we're like. Why are you not just making up numbers at this point? <laughs> Why? That'd be awesome. Just make up numbers. What difference does it make? Who's gonna know you're wrong? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, oh man, just even just to fuck with Steve, just to like. Throw <laughs> off. Steve, we need seventy-five of these. <laughs> oh man. So all three of you, longtime customers and and quote unquote friends of the store, as I right. like to say. But Carolyn and Brian, you, your affiliation goes even a little bit deeper than that. You each worked for the store at various points. This is true. Each, each explained, Carolyn, what what was uh, what did you do for the store? The the quote unquote website. Which, <laughs> well, don't say it like that. It. Don't don't which diminish your work. <laughs> oh, okay. it, which didn't go very far. Um, well, what did you Steve, do? I set it up. And then Steve didn't really give me much to put on it. Like, I put pictures up and, you know, I think a little description and, you know, that was about it. So what did you I got, put up I as got a description? I paid with a trade paperback. Oh, I actually, you know what? I want to back up for a second because, so in episode two of this podcast, we told the rough lover story and the rough lover story involved the, the other young lady who worked for the store oh. on the website. I don't want, uh, I don't want people to think that you were the, uh, no, were the female no, in the no, rough no, lover no, story. No, no, no. Carolyn, you fared the best out of all of the, uh, the females who have worked I at the have. store. The f- well, not all, I mean the few of them. <laughs> well, she was the coolest That's and right. still is. Oh, thank you. Thank did, you. What, uh, did you enjoy doing the website or not so much? I mean, at the time, I was like, yeah, cool, this is awesome. And then nothing really came out of it. You know, Steve didn't give me anything, and, you know, it just kind of died off, and my life went on. Was the description, we have a store, if you want to come in and buy something, fine. 
but I'm not going to tell you how to get here. Close enough. How many signs are up on the store with that? <laughs> like stupid little notes. <laughs> oh, I wish the comic shop free comic book day sign was up. For I think it said, for the millionth time, no, that doesn't mean everything in the store is free. <laughs> you weren't here for co- free comic book day. <laughs> No, I stayed away. You were smart. <laughs> yeah, that probably was wise. Because uh, Steve had a meltdown in the morning. Mm. Oh, about, you know what it was about, right? No. no. Oh, well, here's a nice little postscript to the uh, other documentary story. Oh, God. So uh, <laughs> so this other documentarian came in uh, to film Free Comic Book Day, and a couple of the guys, uh, Mike and, and Sean, were here. And Mike he asked, Apolino? Or, Mike, Mike oh, San Gregorio. Gregorio. Yeah, I saw him. I actually saw him here. And uh, so he asked if he could film them, and they said, no, thank you. That's all they said. They said, no, thank you. I don't want to participate. As I understand it, Steve uh, Steve got very upset. Wow. I thought the big story was the woman who Steve told her to leave because she kept asking, so is everything going to be discounted more the closer we get to the closing? And he was like, no, you need to leave now. You need to leave. You need to leave. I had no idea that's what that was. About. I had no idea either. I knew there was a meltdown, but I didn't know that it was over that. So the documentary is going on, and because they showed solidarity, he flipped out. Did they? Were they actually? Well, nobody was here filming when I was here yesterday. Well, then he left. I mean, he well, he filmed for like twenty minutes, but he didn't huh. shoot, you know, Sean and Mike, and he just filmed the customers, and then he left, as, as I understand it. I'm still mind blown, by the way, still by this whole other documentary thing going on. It's just like, <laughs> it's like, dude, get it's the like fuck in out a of parallel here. universe. <laughs> Parallel universe. Funny, you, funny you say that. Reality. This actually was not a setup. It sounds like it, but it wasn't. Um, so in the first episode, I talked to Steve about what other names they considered for the store before settling on alternate realities, oh, yeah, and he was yeah. like, oh, I don't remember. Uh, so after the episode aired, uh, one of the other co-founders, Kevin Halstead, uh, wrote on Facebook. Wow, and you he, got Kevin? Well, no, no, just he, on Facebook. He, just, he um, wrote a comment. Oh. Yeah, and uh, he said that one of the names they had was Parallel Universe. Uh, and they were going to go with that until Kevin pointed out that the initials were PU. <laughs> <laughs> so I told Kevin I would work that into an episode, and you gave me the perfect setup there. That's, That's awesome. fantastic. That's awesome. Has anybody P-U. in the previous episodes talked about Tom Doherty? Who oh, my was God. One of the people who worked at the store. He's famous for something that if nobody else shares it, I have to all share. Right, yeah, this is all you. So he was talking about, you know, discounts. And when you buy, you get. You save money. So the more you buy, the less you pay. And so his whole thing was, at a certain point, we'll pay you to take the merchandise out of the store. <laughs> it was the oh stupidest thing I've ever heard. So the more you buy, the less you pay. That was his, that was his quote unquote, Odoism. So Carolyn, you spoke about when you worked on the website. Brian, I want to get to, get to uh, your, your work affiliation with the store. So yeah, I was employed by Brandon actually hired me. And I first started working... With the store, I started helping out with the conventions they used to do at the Westchester County Center. And Brandon pretty much said, yeah, you want to go up and help us out, take out long boxes, whatever. It was fine. And then, you know, Brandon's like, yeah, well, you know, you have a lot of stuff in the back. And he's like, yeah, I mean, he's like, I can't pay you, but, you know, you can do work and you can take a statue or whatever. I was like, I was like, deal, because I didn't really have the money at the time. And I was like, no problem. My parents were like, well, what are you doing all day? I'm like, oh, I'm just at the comic book shop. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, hanging out. Uh, so basically, did this for a little while and... I guess when Steve bought the store over, because I really wasn't getting paid or anything, when Steve took over the store, Steve's like comes over and he's like, "Well, I I really don't need you anymore." I was like, "Okay, no problem." I was like, I was like, I was like, I didn't take it harsh or anything like it because I wasn't really getting paid. It's just like I was just I was basically working here for free to pay off my statues, which I wanted to take home anyway because the statues were cool. And you know, I was seventeen, eighteen, nineteen years old, and whatever, and. That's basically how that happens. Like, so I was technically fired from a job I never got paid from. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I mean, you know, I mean, I would never put it on a resume or anything like that. It's just like my employment because you know, there's no proof actually that I worked. For Brian had a sign: "Will work for statues." <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. Doug, did you ever have any aspiration of of working or owning at the store? Actually, I for a while. For the last few years, I've thought if I came into some money, I would want to keep this alive. I don't know if it's a viable business. I don't even know if I'd be good at it. But I would have, if I had the money, let's say I won like $6 million in the lottery. You'd be good at it. 
I would you buy can talk the, to people. I would buy the store, <laughs> and I would find out how to address some of the things that are maybe not being addressed and increase the cash flow and try to figure out a way to make the store what it used to be. I always thought it would be really cool if the showcases that are in the back left-hand corner, if you made that like an area to sit where people could read, congregate, and make this a hangout. This, I think, would make it a more attractive store for people because it would be a hang. It just wouldn't be a place to pick up well, your books. Well, I want to interject real quick because yeah. Steve nearly never really wanted that. He's like, don't take... I remember Steve saying, well, don't take the books off the shelf and don't read them. He's like, what do you think? This is a library. I remember him doing that to some customer. I forgot. I was like, meanwhile, we're all here sitting reading fucking <laughs> comic books. Like, the rest of us, like... And I was like, I just looked at him and, like, he had no idea, like, why I was looking at him. Like, that's like... I don't know. It's, it's just very bizarre. I mean, some of the times that I've come in the store and just obviously, you know, we see different things in different sizes, Steve's, um, you know, personality. But like, I remember him, I remember him getting mad at a customer. I'll never forget this. A father and his kid came into the store and the kid got hold of one of the posters rolled up and started banging on stuff like that. And Steve was like, ho, 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 don't like, and it was a, it was a child. So Steve, you know, cal actually calmly went over to the child and said, uh, uh, you know, have whatever. And the customer says, what are you doing? Give that back to my son. It's like, are you going to pay? And Steve said, well, are you going to pay for it? Because basically he's ruined this now and you owe me the money to pay for this. I'm taking it away and I just don't want to have a problem. The, the customer got so pissed off and he's like, I'm going to fucking rip you a new one. I'm going to... Like he was gonna threaten them because he took the thing. It was like, and she so was like, "Well, you owe me fucking twenty three dollars for this fucking poster that your fucking son just destroyed." And he literally, he literally is like, it's like, you know, like Steve never got it's like. And then the customer just literally grabbed his son and stormed out of the uh, stormed out of the, the you know the front door there. And it's like, oh my god, come back soon. <laughs> and Steve was like. That guy just got me really mad. <laughs> and I was like, and that was the end of it. Steve just went back behind the counter. I was going, whatever he did on the computer, I forget what it was. But it was like, it was like the most bizarre, it was like like watching The Flash, getting really angry in slow motion, and then coming back and just calming down. It was hilarious. Any decent person was like, oh shit, I broke a lamp. Let me give you some money or something like, you know. Unless you're like John Jones and leaving an accident to a crime. <laughs> but, uh, John Jones, who was a UFC fighter, who just was left the scene of a crime. I thought you meant Martian Manhunter. Yeah, yeah, so did I. Everybody's like, John, John Jones. Jones? Yes, Martian Manhunter. All the comic book fans listening to this are like, oh, it's a comic book reference. Oh, oh he's just talking about UFC. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's funny, both on this podcast and, and even just when we, go, when we go out to dinner, I feel like the people might expect a lot more comic book talk than there actually is. We barely talk about we comic books. We barely talk about comics, but it's funny. Uh, we go to Mickey Spillane's in East Chester quite often. And one of the bartenders deemed us the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That that's the that, that is cool. I did oh, not know that. Awesome. Oh yeah, you did. Hondo Hondo named I, us the yeah. I've that, never I knew heard that. that. I remember that. Uh, and I, actually, it's you know, it's it's funny. Um, so that episode with Sean, we talked all about our nicknames for customers. We I forgot it at the time, so I'm so glad you brought it up. Yeah, we. For as many nicknames as, as we've come up with for people, you know, we were on the receiving end of it as well. But exactly. it's not a bad nickname. No, I think it's a brilliant nickname. I think it's, it's as long as it's not the Sean Connery movie, it's a good nickname. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sadly, though, that's probably how they know the League of Extraordinary <laughs> Gentlemen. Yes, this is probably true as well. But I mean, uh, to their credit, I mean, that's how they come and say, "Well, is the League coming in tonight or whatever?" And I, I saw a post because uh, I had told them at Mickey's that we might have like sixty people for dinner on twenty seventh, and I just saw it today that it was. The location was changed yes. to the Venetian Delight, so that's fine, no problem. Uh, we go for drinks we, afterwards. We just figure we take that giant room, oh, yeah, and absolutely. it's you know pay per person. It's easy, and it doesn't matter how many people show up, we can accommodate. Yeah, we uh, yeah. So we're having our last our last supper, as it were, uh, to celebrate the closing of the store. And uh, we were at the at the pizza place yesterday setting this up. And um, Rich Roney, I mean, you know, again, we always talk about how mysterious he is. And uh, he's an assassin. Yeah. Well, the, the, the waitress there who we were setting it up with, she's like, oh, what's the occasion? And he goes, no occasion. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> if I tell you, I'll have to kill you. Oh but he, but, but oh she's I mean, God. this 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 lady, she's the sweetest, nicest lady. And she was just, and again, we're like, we're going to have like 40 people here. It's going to be a bit. What's the occasion? Oh, no occasion. We're, we're just getting together. 
And I, I, I said, no, I, I don't know why I felt the need to like jump to explain? in. Explain, <laughs> but because it just seems so odd to me. And I was like, well, this, you know, the story. This, it's we, so funny because the no occasion. That's more conspicuous than just telling yeah. yourself. <laughs> so that's the thing. I was, oh I was like, God. well. <laughs> Oh my yeah. god! I was awesome. like, "Well, we all met through the store, and the store's <laughs> closing, and and so we wanted to." And she's like, "Oh, that's like." But he did give his cell phone number. What? Whoa. As contact what? info. What? Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. It's a throwaway. It's a prepaid throwaway. <laughs> clearly, it's a burner. You know, we've been talking about this this big final dinner that we're going to yeah. have. Final in the sense that it's the last time we'll be together while the store the is here. open. We will, of course, continue to see each other beyond that. But I'm sure there will be plenty of people at that dinner, maybe even Steve himself, who we, we don't really see much afterward. What do you guys think? Do you think he's going to go? He kind of has to, no? He might not. I don't know. I How does he not he go? He should, but he may not. I don't think he will. I think, I, I, honestly, I, I would actually be insulted if he doesn't go. Well, yeah, it would be insulting. I, I, I think I, 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 I think for all of the stuff that everybody, you know, how much they put into the store and how much they love the store and even especially the effort Anthony's been doing with this since I, I mean I, I don't want to say he owes it to us but I, I would but I would, he owes it to us well, he does <laughs> he does I would feel really us. insulted if he did not come interesting yeah as of now as of this recording he has not responded his wife has she said that she's I, coming but then she, he's going but well but she wrote a note she was like you know I don't know if Steve is going to be up for it he might need some convincing what oh, that's such fucking bullshit I mean, seriously, what are you fucking convincing? This is, oh, uh, uh, never mind. I'm, uh, no, we got to go with this. <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 That is go, fucking go. bullshit. How do you not come to, like, your store's closing? All these people are coming out for you. You, Like, this is all for him. Like, people gave a shit. People had his back in the day. Oh, my. Oh, uh, no way. Uh, He's start, really, I, I'm he can't really, even like, finish right a now. sentence. Like, I can't. Your head looks like oh it's going to explode. <laughs> like, no, but, like. <laughs> Is it is it wrong for me to have a bit of passion? No, for no, fucking... it's wonderful. This is such like this is a, a big part of a lot of people's lives. If he doesn't go to that dinner, I might just say no, no more. <laughs> dead, dead, dead. Dead, dead, dead. Dead, dead, dead. That, uh, that, in terms, Steve will understand. It'll be dead, dead, dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, if he doesn't come, it, it wouldn't be without precedent. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a surprise, though, if he doesn't come either, though. Well, when his when his father passed, you know, there was no memorial service of any kind. And, and we all, you know, knew and admired his father and wanted to do something. So we had our own dinner in his memory. Yes, we and did. Steve was not present for that. I mean, circumstances are different That's there. A... But, but you know, I, if he doesn't come to this either, I don't know that it'd be shocking. No, I wouldn't be shocked. I just would be insulted. Yeah, because I think it puts a nice ending to something... We're all kind of feeling mixed emotions about it. And wouldn't it be great if you went there and we could all say, you know what, this is where it ends. And we all kind of put a bow on it and it's over. And it, and, and it was good while it lasted. Thank you, Steve. Great yeah, store, exactly. great times, great thank bonds. Thank you. It's a simple thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. That's why That's why I'd be insulted because I wouldn't give him, like, I wouldn't be actually giving the last chance to say thank you for, you know, the last 17 years of, you know, Having an impact on my life. I mean, it, it, it's an, it, you know, I, I, I'm not taking it for granted. Maybe he's taking it for granted. I don't know. It's almost like going to the wake because when some, when your parents die, you have a get together of all the people that mattered in that person's life. And to me, the store has a life of its own, and that life is ending, and we all need to have a wake, and kind of, with a catharsis, we all together as a community go it's over the store's gone and we can all move on but we do it together and from that strength we can let the store go and if steve's not there i don't think we can get that closure so he has to go i think if he's in a room with 40 plus people all getting up and pouring out positive thank yous real emotions I think he's afraid of that. I think he can't confront his his inability to accept that much positive for lack of a better word love. He yeah. can't he can't accept that people love him for something he did cuz it's too difficult. It's easy not to get close to people. Look, I've always said I always wanted Steve to be happy, and if closing the store is going to make him happy, then that's what I want. But I also think he should give all of us a chance to give something to him 
and then we ride off into the sunset together. Well, hopefully he will be there, but uh, if not, I know you all will be. And Yes. Yep, for sure. Yep. That's what matters. Good luck with two hours and 40 <laughs> minutes of this. <laughs> really? How, how, uh, wow. Is that how much time is? Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry, dude. Not at all. This was <laughs> I a knew blast. as soon as I saw that email, I was like, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> now, this has been a blast. So I, I thank you all very much for taking no, part in this. Uh, you. Pleasure. Thank pleasure. You. Our, my pleasure. I'm sure it's all of our pleasure, but I, great. Thank you. for. I usually get very anxious around these things, so. Oh, it's like you were on tonight, man. You were <laughs> on fire. Yeah. Yeah, you were. <laughs> this guy came ready to play. Well, I, I, I loaded hold no for punches. bear. I hold no punches. That's right. I do keep it honest. I keep it real. You do. <laughs> well, thank you once again to all of you. Thank you to everyone who listened to this episode. Uh, I hope you tune in for future episodes. Don't be a flat squirrel. <laughs> <laughs>